Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on another episode of Fast Break here, I want to introduce you to our sponsor, the Southern California Warriors Semi-Pro Football Team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes in so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get filmed to try for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing the same shape. No matter what, all summer pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been in the quest to earn titles to give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, get some semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. You can find me on Twitter at SoCal Warriors, on Instagram at Southern California underscore Warriors, and on Facebook, Southern California Warriors. Now, on to the show. Live this week, discussing all things NBA playoffs and freaking some NBA draft lottery talk. But first, can either Heat or Boston kind of pull away from the series, or or each one are destined to kind of smash the other one in double digit wins? Plus, the Mavs squander away a big lead against the Golden State Warriors. Can Jason Kidd figure out the right offense to beat the Warriors? Or are they just doomed to let Luka do everything? Plus, the Lano Magic, Mr. Don Terry's locked team, got the number one overall pick this past Tuesday. What would they do with it? And how the rest of the draft would shake out? We'll discuss that more here on Fast Break Live on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for that's always sports, and you are welcome to join us. Join us as you shout out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I, me and D Lock this got into our respective homes from being out of town here. I just got back from Chattanooga just like minutes before going on air. And d Lock just got back himself from Destin, Florida. d Lock, how are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing great, man. Um, I had a great weekend. Um, had a little mini vacation. Also, what made it better is uh, these great NBA playoff games we got going so far, especially with the evening subjects. Um. And even the Magic get that number one pick. Like, damn, like, I feel like I need to go play the lotto right now, man. Oh, yeah, we'll discuss the Magic here in a little bit. I want to shout out to the chat. Shout out to the chat. Adam Carnick. Shout out to Terry Rodriguez. Shout out to Justice in the chat. Welcome, gentlemen. Let's, right, let's, right, let's, let's get right into it, D-Lock. Last night, Heat Celtics. Heat win by six points, 109-103, in which it's kind of a real crazy game. You know, honestly, the injuries and stuff like that. You figure the Heat's going to, like, blow out the Celtics, but credit to the Celtics for fighting back. But it seemed like it just won, and they couldn't just come back just enough. With Miami going 2-1 D-lock, can, can Eric Sposher and company find a way to get some space between themselves or the Celtics, or do the Celtics tie it up on game two on Monday? Well, for me, um, dude, I honestly thought Miami was going to be in some trouble after losing game two. Um, I wasn't expecting for you know Boston to play that well. Um, So, yeah, so um, my thing is I, I definitely expected um, them to have a tough series. 
I just was expecting them to go in Boston and win uh, Miami. I didn't expect that to happen. And also, I believe Jimmy Butler, he left, what, about maybe eight minutes left in the game or something like that? Yeah, I think a little bit before that because, yeah. A little bit before that, yeah. Knee inflammation. But I, yeah, so go ahead. But I'll say, like, I was like, like, credit to them. The way he's been playing, credit to them to kind of weather the storm and kind of pull away in, um, this past uh, Saturday. Yeah, I mean, they played very, they, and they jumped out, you know, they jumped out hot. You know, um, game three. So, to be honest, I think that with that, that definitely, you know, had me think more into the fact is right now, I just think Miami could, they could mess around and win this next game. Now, they win this next game in Boston. You might as well go ahead and kiss the baby on that one because uh, I don't think that Miami uh, loses in the closeout, you know, uh, in Miami. But I think that Boston would come back and grab game game four. I mean, I think the series, to be honest, man, I think the series might mess around and go to seven uh, because, you know, right now it just seems as if, you know, once one team plays good, the other one comes back and responds. Um, so now I expect Jimmy Butler to be more of a force. Now, granted, Kyle Lahr did come back this last game. I think he's made a huge impact as well. So I think we're going to see more of that in this series, uh, you know, further down. But uh, I just, I've been saying it for the longest. I think that he, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty loaded. But you're going to need more from a Jalen Brown <clears throat> and a Marcus Smart, uh, you know, in game four. So, uh, but I, I, I just don't think Boston just laid down that easy. Um, I definitely think that uh, they'll definitely get that game four tied up. I say this credit to Miami for sticking it out and not let you know letting Boston you know get all the momentum they begin in in Boston to come back and beat them. So good on Miami on that part. You know for the Boston side of things I think it's safe to say that Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum are okay. Because they went down. I mean, Marcus Smart got carried to the back, but he came back. Jason Tatum it was down, but he was out for he was down for a little bit, but he came back. So hopefully those two guys are okay. You know, they, I, I guess they kind of really I don't say exaggerated their injuries, but it's like y'all kind of like I'm doing too much, and then y'all came back. But I think for Boston, Tatum didn't play his best game Saturday. Did not play his best game. Yes, I know he got hurt, but did not play his best game. Kind of not as instant. I know Jalen Brown was catching fire, scored 40 points. You need more of that. And Grant Williams. <sighs> he got to play with some I, – I, I talked about this past couple weeks, D-Log. He got to play with some better control. He got to. You can't be counted. I mean, you got if you're gonna be counted on like this and play these heavy minutes, you gotta play smarter, man. You gotta play smarter. Got to, got to, got to, got to play smarter. Can't be found out in these in these situations, big games like this, where you be uh, counted on to go the distance here. So shout out to Miami though. Mount, uh Strauss, 16 points, four for seven for three point land. Very big uh, good game for him. PJ Tucker, strong game for him. Hit some very uh key shots down the line in the fourth quarter. And then Ban Albayo. One more I can say about him. 31 10, six assists. You know, I surprised that our I, and I say run more through, through him down low, D-Lock. But they got to take advantage of that. I know if you want to compare him to somebody, he's so, somewhat similar to Al Horford, if you really think about it. 
Yes. I don't know if you. I don't know. Y'all notice that? Y'all in the chat? Shout out to uh one Marcus Los Great. I don't know. If y'all kind of noticed that, that Bam and Al Holford kind of play similar. I just, you know, I think Bam and Al is more athletic than Holford, even Holford in his prime. But shout out to him, you know. Even with Jimmy Butler going down with a knee injury, he carried the load. Like I said, Strauss played well. Lowry gave him good, decent minutes come back from his, you know, his injury. So, good for them. I'm curious in game four how Miami's going to play things. Because Boston's going to come out determined. They won't come out trying to click on cylinders. Oh, yeah. And I think that's one thing that uh, Yukota don't get no credit for, the bounce-back game. They do come out and play strong that next bounce-back game. So, you know, like Mark is saying, Jason Tan should be ashamed of himself. Yeah, he should. Everybody's ready to crown him as the next up-and-coming uh, face of the league, one of the faces of the league. Well, game four is put up a shut up time like you just alluded to. If not, I think Miami trying to close that at home. Maybe. I mean, for me, I feel like Boston can play very well consistent. That'd be fine. Yep. But the inconsistent play is gonna is what's gonna you know, hurt. Now remember what Jimmy Butler said in his his interview about being playing physical. You know, he loves to play physical. That's what he he likes to play that. So when they bring physical to him, that physicality, like of course injuries are gonna be mixed from you know few players, but that is what the Heat is built for. Those type of physical type games. They wouldn't grab a PJ Tucker for that specific reason. So you go grab a PJ Tucker. You have a Bam. You no, know, you're 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 big everywhere. You know you have a Kyle Lard who's also known as a as a great as a really good defender. Like physicality is probably their better man. Is what they're known for. So um, the Celtics are going to have to come out and they're going to have to they're going to have to come out hot now. What I believe, I think that I think the Heat are going to come out with the same energy as they did Game Three. And like you said, if Boston don't come with it, because let's not forget, Boston's a hard place to win. It's a very hard place to win. So, uh, for me to see that and understand, hell, we see what Milwaukee just went through. So. Uh, the struggles that they had, you know, in in Boston. So to see Miami come out like that, if they bring that same type of energy, and Boston doesn't respond, we might be seeing, you know, might be seeing Boston make an early exit, or yeah, early exit of the series. So, um, like you said, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But Spolster with the experience is what kind of has me thinking this this could be a very interesting game for. You know, he's been to the NBA Finals. Hell, recently has won a few of them. So he knows the experience. He's knowing what to expect. Um, Boston, on the other hand, I'm not too sure if they, you know, have been down that road. So, and how they can respond. Now, you know, you take a loss at home, you definitely want to respond with a win. Therefore, we just seen the Heat do it in Boston. So I expect for a Boston to come back, come out firing, and would think so. Uh, but I think this is going to be, this is going to tell it the whole series. This game here. Well, to counter your point about Boston, I think I'm Yukota has been, around, especially around Greg Popovich, enough in his time as an assistant coach that he's got that championship experience. So I, 
I think he's been around Pop long enough that he, and especially in those big game situations, that, you know, he can counteract things. You know, I kind of been praying for this brother. I mean, I've been saying this brother should be getting, should have got a heck of a job years ago. I think he probably been better fit than Steve Nash at that Brooklyn job, but he didn't get it. Instead, he got brought on as assistant coach. You know, the guys in the chat saying, you know, this may go seven games. It could be. It could be a seven game series. It, it, it kind of it don't it don't seem like uh, I'm curious what y'all say in the chat. It don't seem like you know these teams are pulling away with each other. It ain't like one team kind of sticking out doing one thing better than the other. So it's gonna be real to see you know how Boston come out of game four. If I was them, I be if, depending on how. Jimmy Butler needs it is. They say it's okay. But to get J- Jason Tatum going, I'll be going right at Jimmy Butler. Him and Jalen Brown get some switches off him, onto Butler. Go at him and see how that knee is. I know they're going to try to stick P.J. Tucker. Damn it. If you get the switch off, damn it, get on with Jimmy Butler. I know he's fine def- Find defend a uh, defensive player, but if he ain't 100 percent D lock, go at his ass. Yep. Get Jason Tatum cooking because he can't he can't go three for fourteen again next game. If he goes three nah. for fourteen again, and and Jalen Brown ain't having his best game, then the, I not say the Heat will cakewalk to a win, but you know, it'll make it a lot easier for them. Well, to me, he have better defenders than Milwaukee. So, they're causing problems for, they're causing problems for Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe the, I believe the first game is where we, it was the only game if I have to I'm gonna have to look back and double check. That's probably one of their better shooting percentage games. And that was early in the game for Boston. They have not uh been consistent. Probably game two probably was pretty decent, but they have been off a lot. So um and they have the defenders like Victor Oladipo is a pretty decent defender off the bench. The reason why Duncan Robinson, who hey, we've been talking about, he got all that damn money. Reason why he ain't really been playing is because Struess is over there jacking up threes, making them, and playing defense. Yep. So he's still in minutes. And taking minutes away from Duncan Robinson. Therefore, we talked about it before. We got to see what the hell he's going to do when the season's up with, that, with, with Duncan Robinson because that's a lot of money at the end. And they still got to pay Tyler Hero. But they had the defenders that can cause issues. Um. So, yes, if Tatum shoots that bad, they're going to be in some trouble. Um, now, to me, I really didn't see – I see Marcus Smart more of a defender than a shooter. So I don't expect for him to give you, you know, on the, the rest of the series 15-plus points. I, I I don't see that from Marcus Smart. They're, like you said, they're going to have to rely on a Jalen Brown, um, Jason Tatum. Um, Horford is going to have to play better. So – Hell, at this point, Derek White is gonna have to come in and make some noise as well. So they, they, you know, they got the work cut out for them. They gotta, they gotta put that work in. But again, we are talking about the Eastern Conference Finals. So, um, to be honest, I think this is the two best teams in the East. I mean, we've seen it all year with the Heat. Remember, the Heat was leading the, they were leading the, uh, the East like early in the season. And I believe Chicago took over. Mm-hmm. Then Milwaukee is it. You know, so it was a, you know, it was a tug. Boston came in. So it was a tug, but Milwaukee was, you know, having a pretty, a really good season early, jumped out hot. So they were still one of the better teams in the East. 
you know, they just kind of was doing the very, very low, you know, low profile. You remember that's when they, James Harden, when the Nets got with the, the players they got, everybody was talking about the Nets. So everybody else in the East really didn't matter. So now that you see this, you know, we know what Jimmy Butler and them were, were a couple of years ago. Remember, everybody was talking about it, oh, it was a bubble thing and it was just a COVID thing. But now they're back making a similar impact. And the only probably key addition is P.J. Tucker and Kyle Lahr. So um, for me, you know, these are two, two of the best teams in the East, but you know it's not going to be easy. So we're going to, like you said, we need Jason Tatum, especially at home. In your backyard, you got to play better than that. Yeah, and we'll see how things play out Monday. It'll be real interesting to see. Uh, going to the chat, uh, Justice is saying, you know, if Butler can't play or isn't 100%, Celtics could run off. Uh, damn, I lost it. Crap. Give me just a second. I just lost it. Could run off three straight. Very true. Terry Rodriguez saying, you know, if the Celtics lose game four, it's, it's a wrap. Justin came back. You know, he said if they can't beat if they if they can't beat the Heat without Jimmy, they don't belong in the finals. And we'll talk about the potential opponents here in a second. Mark is saying we need uh, smart defense and a, the occasional three. We also need at least 10 for Horford as well. So Horford, you know, he had 20 and 14. I guess, you know, continue that projection for them. And then, you know, and P.J. Doug is, Tucker will always be, a, be some defense. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. But to flip to the other side, D-Lock, Dallas, Golden State, they tip off here in about 30 minutes or so. Series moves to Dallas. You thought maybe Dallas would kind of got things figured out and will beat the Mav- I mean beat the Warriors, but I damn sure did. But when Golden State start getting that momentum at the end of that first half. I was saying the same to myself. I think they might turn the tide on this, and that's exactly what they did. Mind you, folks, at halftime, the Mavericks are up double digits. Golden State turned around and won by nine. Despite Lucas' big first half, Despite him finish up with 42 points and eight assists, and Jalen Brunson having 31 points, and Reggie Bullock having tw- uh, 21 points, six for 10 for three point land, that still wasn't enough against this Warriors team. Be like, I'll let you go first. What can Dallas do to kind of turn the tie in this series, in your eyes? Well, for one, they can they cannot have a bad shooting night against the Warriors. That could not happen. Because the, the, the thing is, you you get these shots, you got to make them. The reason why is because let's take that same mindset with the the Warriors. They take a lot of shots. They're gonna make damn near eighty percent. They gonna make a lot of shots just because of we've seen them. When they catch fire, they're not missing from nowhere. You got Steph, Clay, Jordan Poole, hell, even Andrew Wiggins out there making buckets. So, in order to get to turn this, honestly, in my mind right now, they're gonna have to slow this game down. You cannot go in a you cannot go a shot to shot with this team. That's just not gonna it's not gonna work. This team can shoot threes from anywhere. Now granted, Benny Smith, Jalen Brunson, Luke, you're gonna get, you know, the shots. You got guys that can make the threes, but dude, this team here, they don't miss. So for me, um, how many times Steph Curry won a three point contest? Once or twice? I had to check and see, but I think it's been a couple times. 
Yes. Um, Clay Thompson, I don't think he won or did he? I think he has won one. Yeah, so you got two guys, you got two guys on there that has won a three point contest. That's already two guys. Then you got one Jordan Poole who I'm pretty sure when his time come around, maybe next year or the year after he's possibly possibly be uh in a three point contest and make a great showing. So you don't want to go neck to neck with this team. You don't want to try to score 120, 130 points. You know, they got to slow this pace down with this game. That's how you turn this. You cannot let this team catch fire and go back and back and forth because once you miss two or three and they make those two or three, we've seen it the last game. It was kicking the ass early. I thought the game was over, to be honest. I thought it was done. But with this team and how they generate points, you, know, you get two points, they get three. So they're just slowly reeling you back in, which is what they did with, with Dallas. And now that crowd started to jump. It, it went crazy. So for me, I, I think that they need to slow this game down. It needs to be more of a... Now, you need to slow this game down, get your buckets, but you don't need to be a fast pace because this team is built for that. You know, even Draymond, if they need some some threes, he can jack them. He can jack them. So, at at this point, if I'm Jason Kidd, slow this game down. Oh, Luka's going to be Luka. Steph is going to – do not give him the chance to put up so many damn shots. That would be my answer. You know, for some of y'all in the chat don't that don't know this, I coach basketball and stuff like that with younger children and all that. You know, middle schoolers, high schoolers, you know, kids in that age, but mainly around that middle school age. And one thing that's emphasized at that age is not, I mean, yeah, you may in your head, have a guy, a star player, whatever, a good one of your top players, whatever that set, where that means. But you, you kind of want to get good ball movement and basic basketball fundamentals, all that stuff. Now, what I get, what I'm trying to get to is the Mavericks have three good, very good ball handlers. Guys can really get their own shot in Dinwiddie. Brunson, and of course, Luka Doncic. All those guys can get their shot, own shots. We've seen evidence of that, of course, in their NBA careers. Brunson has really kind of come to, you know, really, you know, cemented himself as one of those starting caliber guards in the league. That first half of the lock, they were doing just that. Ball movement. You know, not depending on Luca to do everything and stuff like that. I was like, okay, things are going good. But what I alluded to about that run that the Warriors were getting at the end of the half and when it carried over to the second half, it's like they kind of abandoned ship in a sense and kind of went back to that Luca ball. And when that Luka ball is, he'll air the ball out. And which I, some of y'all don't know what that term means. Air the ball, it means just dribble the ball out till you get the best look or whatever or the scheme in your offense. Luka air the ball out to like nine, eight, nine at the end of shot clock. And then he's trying to make something happen. And at that point, your guys are already standing around waiting for you to do some of the ball. And yes, Luke is a very great shooter. Can shoot the lights out. I'm not denying that at all. Even that late in the game when they try to come back. Can shoot the ball. Swish through the net. Cut through the court. I'm not denying that. When he's on, he's on. But, like you talked about, D-Lock, you can get away with that playing OKC. You can get away with that playing the Orlando Magic. 
you can get away with that, you know, playing the Sacramento Kings. With this team, and they bounce back this year, you can't do that. You can't be – Jason can't expect Luke Doncic to beat this Golden State Warrior team. I, and Jason can't be around the league long enough to know that. He know better than that. And I'm kind of surprised that he has gone, you know, kind of went complacent in this. Let Luke, you know, bail him out type of offense. Now, to Marcus's point in the chat, you know, guys like Finley Smith, Kebler, or Kleber, and even Dinwiddie, who have only had four points, could produce a little bit better. We can say that. True. Yes. But, you know, when the things getting tough or something like that, don't abandon ship. Don't get away from your game plan. If that one game plan ain't working, go to something else. But that shit easily get easy getting pick and rolls with Donches, Brunson, and Dimley on the same time. I'll be pick and rolling Steph Curry to death. So much so that either they gotta hide him and guard him and put him against Clipper or something else. Something. They gotta figure out something because it's just like you said. <clears throat> I think you messaged me. I think that same game. It's like Luca's doing the child too much, um, and it's like they're relying on him to do so much. So these other, you know, players of Brunson or Fanny Smith, Hell, Dwight Powell, these guys gotta wake up and do something. They gotta give him some help. Some real help. So, like you said, the the the, the Luca dribbling the ball out, just look, just waiting. I was watching the game too. I'm looking. It's like every time Luca get the ball, they're clearing the space so he can do ISO. That's that's what it is. <laughs> so it's like that's all. Like, okay, is that the only thing that this game they're gonna rely on? So, um, which makes me wonder what the hell they do during the offseason because clearly right now. Like, okay, granted, a lot of people picked the Warriors to be uh, NBA champs and say they're going to be one of the final final four, top two, which is cool. But the Mavs have a player in loop. Um, if they can be something, then um, I see them making this series uh, kind of interesting. But if not, this might be a gentleman sweep or a sweep, man. I, another thing that kind of Killed him this game, and I talked about it in the past about uh, Dallas post presence. Kevon Looney had 21 12 that game. The back doors and stuff like that. I know they're trying to hide Luka down low, but I, I'm sorry, I'm saying this over the airways. He can't play defense for shit. Excuse my language. I don't, we don't cuss much on this show, but his defense is but true. His defense is. Fucking atrocious. Now I got kids. I coach. Who could probably... You know, I ain't trying to get ahead of myself, but he, they could give him fits until he eventually bought the shot. But, but Jesus, Louise, his defense. And yeah, Mark, Mark I, I agree. You know, Steph can't either. You know, and they both, you know, more for their offensive output, but damn. I mean, but Lucas, but damn, but damn, you you six eight and you six eight and two thirty at least, man. Like come be better at that. In my eyes. Yeah, and that's I think we're gonna see that maybe hopefully next year. Um hell. Boy, this year old, but I, I don't I don't see his defense just you know, improving that quick. But um, hopefully, you know, next year we start to see it because that's that's like you said, that's hurting them. That's hurting them. But 
Do this like they're playing one one against five when Dallas played. It's like Luka has to do everything for them. Now the guys, some of the guys, Penny Smith will show up and have a game where he just goes crazy. Brunson have a game. Hell, then we had a game against Phoenix, you know. But it needs to be consistent. You're playing against a team right now that they can jack up sixty threes and then they make fifty. So you can't rely on just one person. Okay, well you know what? This possession, we're gonna go get two points. Go State, go get three. All right, we're going to get three. Then go say, like, they need other players to get involved and play more, play better. And then, like you said, that defense has to be a hell of a lot better than what it's been. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, another couple things I want to point out, too. It's nice that – it's. I give Steve credit this. Steve Kerr credit on this. It's nice that he gave Moses Moody some confidence – to go with them in that fourth quarter when they're making a comeback. And I say it to myself, when Jason Wiseman come back next year, you got to give him that same confidence too. I know it's a little bit off topic, but if you give Moses Moody time in the stretch to make a comeback against in the Western Conference against this team, use that towards James Wiseman next year. If he messes up next year, whatever, and not playing to your standard, let him ride, let him figure out. Because you got, you're got going to be dependent on him uh, next year. I know I got ahead of myself here. But if you give Moses Moody this confidence to play, and granted, you didn't play Kaminga in this game at all. You kind of went more veteran approach than give Wiseman the same treatment next year because you're going to need him. You know, who knows what's going to happen with Aiden and Phoenix? You know, God knows we'll see what happened with the Lakers and Anthony Davis and that bunch right there. Car Anthony Towns. You know, we'll see what the Spurs do. Zion, Pelicans, Memphis. kind of, All the teams kind of like, you know, went healthy and, and crap like that. Playoff contenders. We'll see. But, you know, to, to go to tonight's game, D-Lock, Who you got winning tonight's game? Man, <clears throat> for this, I got Dallas winning this one. I just don't see them going down 3 0. Um, now, that, now, Golden State is going to bring the energy, but I just feel like Dallas is going to, they're going to close this one out. They're going to finish this game off. Um and get ready for the next one. Now, let me say this right now. I don't know if anybody knows this, but or they caught on to what I've been saying in the past couple of uh, podcasts, but a couple episodes. I want I want Dallas to win the series. I just want to see Luca in the damn NBA finals. I don't know why. I just, I just want to see Dallas get there. Um, like the Warriors, know what they possess, know how good they are. I just am rooting for Dallas to win. But realistically, um, dude, I I think Dallas wins tonight. And then <laughs> game four, uh, Otis State's going to win that. It just, there's so, there's so many, so many weapons on that team. I think Dallas is going to try to, at some point, Dallas is going to get back to time. We're going to try to outshoot Golden State. And you're not going to do that. That's just not going to happen. Like, yeah. Remember when they won the championship without Kevin Durant? They yeah. had, you know, the pieces. They had the defense. They're kind of similar. Now they just add another shooter in Jordan Poole. Well, yeah, Jordan Poole really came in live. Yeah. So for me, you know, you you grab you 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 got a Jordan Poole, and now um, Draymond is Draymond. Uh, Kevin Looney. 
pretty decent piece. Now, I think they had better bigs on those teams, but uh, or more bigs. I just I feel like this team is is now an extra shooter. So now you give that break to Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. They don't need to take so many shots now. So now they can be more efficient. So, um, but like I said, I, I think Dallas wins this game. Um, and then I think Golden State takes the next one. Uh, go to the chat real quick. Marcus is calling for a sweep. So I go to State Warriors sweep. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez is going with the Mavs. But he's saying that's the only one they're going to win. I'm in line with Mr. Rodriguez. I think Dallas will win this game. But going to say finishes the job. I think in this game, I think Dim Willie will have a better showing. And I think Luka will get a big win. And I think one thing going to say got to do. They found out Draymond. If I was them, get him to foul again or get him frustrated enough that he throwing himself out the game, which I'm kind of surprised. It's like each call that go against Golden State's way, he's up in the rest phase, like this dog cussing him out. I was like, I, I was like, damn, are y'all scared to throw him out or something? But if they do get in your face like that, throw, throw his behind out. But give me Dallas to win this game, D-Lock. Uh, I know Jordan Poole had 23 points off the bench, but, you know, it could he get that again? Maybe, maybe not. But the only way I see, the way I see the Warriors win this game is again, if they, if everybody's catching fire again and, you know, to take advantage of Lucas' poor defense and Dim Willie and Brunson don't show up. I think Finley Smith, he'll have a basketball game. I think he play, he plays a little bit stronger. Bull, I think he'll play pretty well. And then I, I think that's really about it. I mean, you can't depend really on nobody else. You know, Clipper, he can play pretty well at home. Bertans, that's another fool getting paid a lot of money to do nothing. If he can show give you something, then good. That was a stupid drive in that game too. He not his game. Should have drove the ball and try to kick it out and got the ball so on. I was like, what the fuck, what, what the hell are you thinking about? But anyways, I'm just rambling right there. But give me go to uh give me uh Dallas tonight. But I think going to say we'll finish out the series in five. Oh, so you think it's gonna be done? You give, you give, you give Dallas one win. Oh yeah, I, it's one win. That Dallas is not there yet. And like I, I think I like I alluded to you not too long ago. They need some. They need some more toughness in their style, and they need a big down low because the five out offense. It gets you to a point, but you still need to be has some respect down low. And you ain't getting that for nobody from these characters they got on their bench. Hell, even well, this is gonna lead to the next one, then. This is gonna lead to the next segment. What do they do during the offseason? That's a good question. Very good question. Because the draft lottery happened this past Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen, with the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic, yes, that Orlando Magic went out and getting the number one overall pick. D Lock, I know you're a Magic fan. I'll let you have the floor. 
what does this team do with the first overall pick? Because I'll give you my opinion what they should do with this team. But go ahead, sir. Well, I kind of – so I'm going to – you, you already know how I roll. Like, I'll tell you what I what, what I think they should do and what the hell they're going to do because the magic going to be the damn magic. So we already got Jonathan Isaac on the contract, uh, I think three or four years. Um, don't know really what they expect from him right now, injury prone. If he could play a full season, I think he'd be a hell of a player. Um, you got Markel Foles, you're loaded with guards, Markel Foles, Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs. Uh, so you're already loaded at that, that position. Um, Obamba, yeah, he's going to walk, even though, didn't we talk about this months and months ago? Yep. That if, you're, if, if, if he's going to leave, you might want to trade him. So we knew he was going to walk. You didn't extend him. You extended Wendell Carter. So uh, you got a stud and um, actually found out he was an all-rookie. I think it's past week on the all the first I think all rookie team, Franz Wagner. Mm-hmm. He played hella great this season, so I think that is one of your pieces. Now I think you you you, you build with him, Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, um, folks. Now you're gonna have to figure out what you're gonna do with those three guards. You're not gonna you're not gonna trade Suggs or Anthony, so possibly folks might be out the door. For me. This team, you, you, it's a tough one. But I was thinking, I'm thinking Paulo. I can't even pronounce his name correct. That's who I wanted to draft. Um, look at Chet Holmgren. I think he's going to be a hell of a piece for anybody that drafts. But I just feel like that system or what they're trying to build, um, there's a lot of comparisons with him, his body frame with Kevin Durant. You know, his body frame also compared to Christoph Porzingis. Um, so a lot of people like him. Um, but for me, I like I like I like Paolo. I think he's gonna be a hell of a player. I feel like, you know, everybody's talking about Chet, the guy from um Auburn, I can't I think it's Jabril. Uh Jarabi Smith. Jarabi, yeah, Jarabi. Um, but I just Follow it. I looked at. I mean, I, even though we've seen it uh, during the during the tournament, um, I just think follow is just a piece for us. I mean, the, the comparison of a Julius Randle frame, like he is a person that you can bring him in and he's going to make a big impact. Because, like I said, we don't need any guards. You're going to have Wendell Carter. This, what I'm thinking is, you're going to bump Wendell Carter down to the down to the five. And Wagner can play either the three or the four. You put in the follow win, boom, that's your five with those two, Jalen Suggs and Cole Anthony. Now, me personally, I probably would have either Suggs or or Cole Anthony come off the bench, play that six man role. But um dude, I'm I'm a magic fan. I'm just being happy that we got this opportunity. I wanted to have something to build from. You know, build you know, build with. So um uh, you get your core with Paulo, you get you know, Anthony, Wendell Carter's gonna be there. So uh for me, that's what that's what I think we should do. Um now I wouldn't be surprised uh if they went and got Chet. And I I really I wouldn't mind that it's just my preference is follow. Um I just don't I think I think Chet is a, a project. Like, I think it's going to take, you know, just a, a, maybe a couple of years to get them to where you want to. Um, and what what did I say about the Magic? I, I always say about them on the air and off the air. They don't, it's like they some, they start something and they just say, okay, well, this is not enough time. They don't give us enough time. They don't give the coaches enough time. They don't give the players enough time. So and that's the reason why I don't see Chet as being the guy for us to pick because you can get him, but he's going to be a project. You're going to have to take some time to build around this guy. And do the Magic do that? No, nah, they don't usually do that. So, um, for me, I think they go follow. Um, now, OKC was sitting at number two, right? Yes. They're going to be happy as hell regardless, but now they're in a very good spot. Um, you got two, obviously, number ones that you can get in check and drill. Um, 
And then Houston is Houston is sitting pretty out of everybody. Because in a sense now you, you can't go wrong with when you pick at three. It's more pressure on on Orlando and, and uh, OKC. But I ended with this. And this is the prayer that I say <laughs> until the draft. Orlando Magic, please do not mess this up. Man, whatever you do, please don't mess this shit up. Please don't. This week, hey, we finally got something going our way. Please do not mess this up. Real quick, I tweeted from our show account on Fastbreak at IESR. If you're not following it, please do. I tweeted it from that night. First day in business, get rid of Jonathan Isaac. Get that salary out the your your team. Yep. I don't know what his health status is. He should be coming like not fine for next year. Trade him. Because my eyes, I think the number one overall player in my eyes is Robbie Smith. Same size as Isaac does about the same things. I think he, he's gonna be a better offensive player than Isaac when all saying all things said and done. So it, it, it just it just looks better to trade Isaac. If you draft Smith and keep Isaac, then you're not doing yourself any favors for either guy. But Isaac really really hasn't done much for you, so and you've been in this re recycle rebuild. Why not just keep it going? Kick the can down the road, trade Isaac for <coughs> excuse me, future capital and go about your business. That's what I would do. Chet Holgram, maybe you trying a pick. I mean, he will uh, help out defensively with that team. You know, th there's the questions about his, you know, build and whatnot. Now, granted, they said the same thing about Kevin Durant, but Kevin Durant, when he was coming out high school and stuff like that in college, everybody knew he was the truth offensively, and we we've seen that now. Homegroom. Yeah, he could put the ball on the floor and stuff like that in high school and all that. But it wasn't at the levels of Durant and his build and whatnot. For me, for the Magic, I think you take Smith, let him develop, let him grow with his team. Because you can't take another guard. You've been taking a lot of guards here and wing players here for the past few years. You can't do that. You can't do that if this don't land a magic team. Now, for Paulo uh, Becaro, I think I got him third because his defense ain't there at times. And I just think sometimes, and going back to the tournament real quick, you know, I felt like he shouldn't got off, should have gotten a full better offensively against lesser competition to, to kind of help Duke take over. You know, I just kind of felt like, like sometimes like, damn dog, you should be dominating some of these cats and you're not really going over it. Like you should. With your ball handling ability and size like that, you should be more dominant than you are. But sometimes you kind of play down to your competition. Like, it can't be better. I know we, we'll discuss the draft here in a couple of weeks, but, you know, Ben, uh, much room from Arizona, Jaden Ivey, King and Murray, uh, uh, Sheldon, Sharp, Sheldon Sharp, which is going to be a real interesting name. Come draft talks that he could he sneak in as a top three, maybe. Johnny Davis. A lot of names we'll discuss down the line, but for the Lando Magic to get this pick, they can't mess this up. Now, past history has shown that they struck very well the first overall pick. So, can they strike again these years later? History says, yeah. But like I said, first order of business, 
to kind of, if you take Jarvis Smith, get rid of Jonathan Isaac, and go from there. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I told you, I, I, I just don't want us to mess this up. But at this point, you know, you definitely move Dante Isaac uh, because you have plenty of options up there, healthy options, um, at, especially at number one. So uh, let's just do something different, man. I, I, I'm tired of having the same shit happen to us over and over and over. But we need to get this right. But we got right on Jalen Suggs and Franz Wagner, clearly. So let's continue to move in that in that direction. Yeah, I will leave it at that, and I agree with you there, sir. Thank y'all for tuning in tonight uh, with us here, here on the show. Uh, shout out to the chat. Shout out to uh, everybody in the chat. Uh, Marcus, Taryn, Justice, Adam. Appreciate y'all hopping in the chat. Thank y'all for uh, making the convo great tonight. Let's do it again next week. And enjoy the game tonight, uh, Dallas and Golden State. d how can people find you find on social media? You guys can find me at Black Dash 813. Uh, that's why I'll be doing all my tweets and also on my Instagram is Black Dash 813. Uh, let them know where they can find you at and also the show. Find the show uh, and our takes on Fast Break at IESR. That's Fast Break IESR. Also, do follow iSportsRadio.com and all social media platforms. Go live on all major 32 major NFL markets. All the shows, including shows like basketball here, volleyball, boxing, MMA, baseball. We got y'all covered here on this network. But go to iSportsRadio.com. The playback for this show and all the other shows in the network. Also, I want to shout out to our Patreon supporter, supporters. Bay Area Rays, Marcus, Los, Ray, Keys to the Gate, and Anonymous. Hey, thank y'all for the support on Patreon. Please continue to do so and we'll bring y'all great content like this every week for y'all. But tune in next week, ladies and gentlemen. More playoff talk, more draft talk. As the combine kind of came and went, so we'll discuss that here here next week. Until then, we out.